G'day guys, John for the Hot End again. Another printer for you to have a look at. This time it's the Tronxy, or Tron XY, C5. Okay, we're back. The Tronxy, I think that's how you say it, the C5. This is it right here. This printer is how I like printers to be. It is totally self-contained. The whole thing is in its own box. There's no bits and pieces hanging off it anywhere. There's no power supply hanging off it, no separate controller box. Everything is as you see right here. It's a very nice, neat package, even in red so it goes faster. This printer is a 12 volt system. It's the, I think Core XY is the correct term, although I'm not 100% sure, you might correct me on that. Uh, it's the same format as the Fogatech FT5. <coughs> You'll have to excuse my voice, I've got a bit of a cold. And as you know, in men that can be fatal. It's the man cold. <laughs> Same format as the Zortrax printers, the high-end printers, not quite up to the standard of a Zortrax. It is nevertheless a reasonably solid, quite well-built little printer. Now I say little, it's uh, got a build volume of 210, 210, oops, stay, and 210, although I found that Height-wise, I could only get 200 out of it, so nah, 10 mil, doesn't matter, I guess. As far as I can tell, runs standard firmware, as in Marlin. It has a LCD screen. It comes with an aluminium heated bed, and it also comes with a build tack like stick-on surface that goes onto the aluminium bed. The heated bed, supposedly goes up to 110 degrees although the highest temperature i could get out of it was 94. now 94 is fine if you're printing on a build surface but if you're printing on glass it's not quite hot enough it's close but not quite and that brings me to the other big advantage of this printer because it's self-contained because it's in a box you can print ABS straight out of the box. That's right, ABS straight away. As you know, I love my ABS. I use ABS a lot. And this printer, as it sits right here, will print ABS beautifully. Now, you'll see by the pictures that are rolling through that the smaller models in ABS are close to perfect. There's no uh, layer adhesion problems. Everything worked beautifully. When the model is a little bit bigger, I did have some minor layer separations because it's a larger model and has some sharper angles on it. And I didn't bother to slow the speed down. Slow the speed. Yeah. This was, these were printed at, I think from memory, 50 millimeters a second. So I would suggest that if you get one of these printers, you make yourself up a door, because there's no door on the front, block out the handles on the side, and maybe even put a top on it, which would be very, very easy to do. And then you'll have a printer that will print ABS of any size really nicely. Okay, you've seen some of the, the prints that I've done. Now, packaging. This is the packaging that it came in. As you can see, it looks quite sturdy. But, and I'm going on memory here because I didn't take a lot of notice when I first unpacked it. The bed was up the top. Now the motors and everything are down the bottom, but the bed was up the top, which meant that there was a fair bit of weight on the upper carriages of the printer. And because we're in Australia, which is a fair way away, some of the top framework had actually come undone, had come adrift. 
it was floating around in the printer. And you'll see here where that rod, that's a Y axis rod goes into the holder, which is uh, only a blow molded holder. Uh, the grub screw or set screw wasn't tight enough and that had actually come right out. A couple of the belts had come off and it was generally a bit of a mess. But it was a mess that was easy to clean up. Everything just went back where it should have been. There was nothing broken as such. It had just come adrift. So I put all that back together as it should be and plugged it in and wham, printing straight away. The bed leveling is a little bit dodgy. Uh, there's a screw at the back which triggers the Z limit switch and that's okay, but it's very loose. The screw itself is loose. So while you're printing, the vibrations actually can change that screw, it can unwind a little bit. Uh, and then while you're printing, that's okay, but when you go to start the next print, of course, you, your height is then off. Another thing I found was when going from down low to up high to start printing, for some reason, which I haven't found the cause of yet, it goes out of horizontal level. This side actually ends up about two millimeters higher than this side. Now, the motors are connected by the wiring, so I really can't answer why that's happening. Everything seems fine, they run freely, the, the brass nuts run freely on the lead screws. Everything looks fine, so I, I really don't know. Maybe it's a motor problem, I'm not sure. But as we've said before, we can only review the printer that we have, that was sent to us, and on this one, that was a problem. You can see underneath that the wiring is adequate. The size of the wiring looks fine for the high load items. It's a pretty standard looking control board. It has your standard stepper drivers and uh, cooling fans, cooling fins on the stepper drivers. And it has a fan built in which blows onto the board, which is good. The extruder fan, when you first turn it on, is quite noisy. So the, I'd say the, the fan itself is not a real good quality fan. The bearings, I think, are gone already in it. But once it warms up in, say, 15, 20 seconds, it quietens down and, and is fine. So I haven't changed anything there. It works really well. It does not come with a filament runout sensor, and with a printer this size, that doesn't bother me at all. It does not have auto bed leveling, and as you know, I'm not a fan of auto bed leveling anyway, but on this one, it does have that issue that I spoke about. So it does not have any of the tricky whiz bangery that some of the other printers we reviewed have. It does not have power fail resume, it has none of that. But as far as I'm concerned, I don't see that as a problem. I see those things as just gimmickry. Unless you're on a, a large format printer, like a 300 by 300 printer, a run out sensor, yes, is handy. I've already said I don't like bed leveling, so I don't see that as a problem on this printer. I do see a problem in the price though. Uh, currently it's listed at $349.99 US, which I think for a printer of this size and this quality is probably a touch high. So if you can get them a bit cheaper than that, uh, you'd be looking at a really good value printer. But at that price, it's a touch high. I'm sure there'll be flash sales and what have you on them from time to time, so keep an eye out. I think it's definitely a printer worth owning, purely because of the fact of its ability with ABS. You'll see the score that I've given it, which was 158, which on the scale of printers that I've scored, 
is pretty good. It's, it's not bad at all. Long term, I see this printer as average, I would say, average. And I would say that about all Chinese import printers. Long term use or heavy duty use is average. Now I mentioned the, the stick on plate that goes on the heated bed. I'm not sure what it actually is, but because I was printing ABS and printing at 80, 85 degrees on the bed, I destroyed it. It uh, actually, the hot end melted into it in places because of the issue with the bed leveling. I scarred it all over the place and it, it melted like plastic. And taking the models off the surface, it had stuck really well. In fact, so well that when I took the model off, it took a piece of the plate with it. So I would recommend if you're using this printer to put a glass sheet on there and print on glass or get a good quality print surface like PrintNZ uh, or genuine BuildTech and put that on your glass and then it would be fine. The adhesive on the build surface was also poor. It lifted and I had to put clips on it to, to hold it to the aluminium bed. Um, again, it's, it's a quality thing and you get what you pay for, remember? So it's an easy fix, but for the price of this printer, you know, maybe you shouldn't have to be fixing those things. Okay. That's probably all I can tell you about this printer. Yes, it prints. It prints PLA nicely. It prints ABS beautifully. And all in all, not a bad machine. Quite, quite good, in fact. Now, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell because I might not be around too long because of this man cold I have. Uh, so we need as many subscribers as we can before I die. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. And don't forget that we have a Patreon system. If you can possibly help us out there, that would be great as well. Alrighty, that's it for this one. We'll see you on the next one.